Good morning, my name is Matthew from Axel and today I'm going to make a short video to demonstrate how you can configure Axel terminals and the Axel remote management software to automatically configure remote terminals without any human contact at the terminal end. So I have here a Model 80 terminal but what I say applies to all Axel terminals. I'll plug it in, keyboard, mouse and network. I won't plug the network in just yet switch on and it goes into its quick setup routine where you can select keyboard and everything else. Now what you may not have noticed is down the bottom here it's trying to find a PC running the Axel software. So if I press any key I go into the interactive mode and set up a terminal as you've probably done before. If you have the Axel software configured and you attach a network, then this happens. The terminal from total factory defaults will find the PC running the Axle management software. You can do various things. We have it here configured to download new firmware and then download a configuration file. Now this takes about a minute as we have to download the firmware, reboot with the new firmware. There's the first reboot. We then download the configuration file and reboot with the new configuration file. And you don't have to download the firmware, you can just download a configuration file, which is probably what most people would do most of the time. So there we are, a terminal set up without any interaction from the terminal and if we power cycle it it would of course just connect directly to the server so it does that special process to find the axle management software only when it's in its factory default condition so I'll now show what is done on the server side to set this up I've done a separate video on the axle software which shows how you get a configuration file from a terminal but I'll quickly recap here so you install the software, which is free from our website. You right click on a terminal. You select remote administration and get configuration and save that file as a text file. Uh, and that will be the template that the remote terminals will pick up. So once that's done, you then enter the cog up here. And this is the auto configuration. Now I won't go through all the options. Once you understand the concept then the options should be pretty logical. So I'll run through the, the basics. So what you do is first of all you add a group and I will just call the group Axel. You can then select which terminals will get this particular configuration file. So you might want to for example separate terminals by serial number or terminal types to have different configuration files. I, for example, if you use Model 85s as a point of sale terminal, you may have a different configuration file than, say, for Model 80s in the office. So you can filter various parameters here to specify which terminals will get this particular configuration file. I'll leave it set to all Axle terminals. Password, if you have a password set on your terminals you'll need to enter it here. The firmware file, if you want to update the firmware automatically then you specify the firmware file here. Now this can be useful if you're updating lots of terminals you could set up this software with a new firmware file and a new configuration file and then just tell your users to factory reset their terminals and they will automatically update themselves. We don't recommend that you update the firmware with brand new terminals. They should leave the factory with the most current firmware, but the option is there. The setup file is the configuration file. Now, I took one earlier, I call it template. Specify that here and save and then launch auto configuration and it says down here, waiting on port 80. Now I've panned back so you can see the management console here and the terminal here. And if I factory reset the terminal, 
advanced factory settings, it goes back to defaults, which will force it to try to find the PC running the software and download the configuration file. And we're updated as to what's going on both here and here. Now things to add, the program here can be run as a service in the background. It can run on a PC or on a terminal server. And the one thing I have yet to show is how the actual terminal was able to find the PC running the software, bearing in mind that terminal had no knowledge of my local network here. So I'll just let them boot and I'll cover that. So the terminal tries three ways to find the PC running the Axle software. The first, it will assume that the software is running on the DHCP server, which it can find. So that's your first option, is run the Axle software on your DHCP server. If you're a small company with one terminal server, then that works fine and very simple to do. The second way is using DHCP and we use the vendor ID fields. So the terminal, when it's switched on, it will contact the DHCP server and extract this information and then contact the PC and transfer the file across. And the third way, which I think is the way most people do it, is the terminal is hardwired to resolve a specific DNS name, which is AXRMSCRV. So you basically on your PC either rename it or set an alias as AXRM SERV. So that is basically it. Uh, there's much more to it and many more options. You can upload uh, screen logos. You can use SSL if security is an issue. But uh, to go through every option would be rather more than this video is planned for. If things don't go as planned, then here are a couple of things to try. One is from the terminal, or any terminal, go into Setup, Diagnostics, Ping, select Server Name, and if you've used the third method, where we resolve the DNS name, check that you can ping the name, so AXRM serve is alive. The other common problem is we use XML on port 80 to transfer the firmware and the configuration file, and quite often on a default PC installation, port 80 is used by the IIS service, uh, web service, which isn't normally used, but it's normally running, so it obscures that port. So I'll do a bit of information on that. So this is how I do it. So if when you try to launch the auto configuration service, if you get can't listen to port 80, it means something else is using port 80. You can use Netstat, but I've always found that a bit cumbersome. I downloaded a program from the internet called Advanced Port Scanner. It was free. Um, and basically you enter the IP address of your PC or server and scan. And here's my machine. Ports open. And it confirms here port 80 is open and it's being used by www.http which almost certainly indicates it's being used by IIS. And to turn IIS, and again there are many ways to do this, but the way which I use is from control panel, select turn Windows features on or off, find internet information services, untick it, OK. If we refresh this, port 80 is no longer open, and if we relaunch the Axle service, it now comes back saying listening on port 80. Now it may not be IIS causing the problem, it could be Skype or various other programs, um, but the terminal is hardwired to use port 80, so if port 80 is being used by something you can't stop, then you'd have to use a different machine to run the Axle software on. 
So I hope that's helpful. And if you have any questions, then please contact your usual Axel contact. Thank you very much and bye for now.